Hey, everybody. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. I saw some comments when I sat down about people like Happy Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'll say Happy Tuesday to everyone who has not switched over to Wednesday yet. Happy Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> and Happy Day, whatever it is that you happen to be watching this, because some of you are watching it on replays. Who knows how long in the future? So hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It is another hat day for me because um, I have therapy often on Tuesday mornings, and this is just something that I'm doing for myself and for my own mental health. And I wanted to keep therapy going even when we were, you know, quarantined and so forth. So we've been doing it on my screen, but that makes Tuesday like very packed, busy, and emotional, and everything else. So there's no time to curl my hair. <laughs> So I show up at therapy pretty much every week with just wet hair and it just dries on its own. So hopefully it looks okay. But I was like, yeah, let's put this cute little hat. Look, it's seriously like Hello Kitty with the cherry on her head. It's the cutest. I love it. <laughs> so I wanted to start out today by just asking, how are you doing? Because I know that, you know, we're weeks, if not some of you over a month into this quarantine, stay at home, shelter at home. How are you? <laughs> I don't want to bring down the chat. But then again, I also just want to check in on you guys, see how you're doing. I know that in some ways, it's starting to feel like business as usual, not because we're back to normal, but because this has become our new normal. But at the same time, it also feels like it's dragging on. So I think that I'm having some moments here where it's like, I'm like Shanna just said, I'm feeling extra tired. And, you know, I know that it's like, oh, you know, we're all tired because we have a baby that isn't sleeping and she's teething and all that stuff. But I feel like it's a little bit more than that. I think it's just feeling fatigued of, not being able to get out and do things the way that I normally would do them. So just curious how you guys are doing as well. Um, yeah, a month and a half for some of you. I'm glad to hear you're doing fine. I bored Christabel. I understand if you guys didn't know, by the way, we saw that HBO is offering free streaming for a lot of their old shows. So if you're bored, but you want to look for something that's like not on Netflix and you're looking for something to watch, check out HBO because usually it's like a $15 a month subscription, but they've got like the, the entire Sopranos, Six Feet Under, which is a great show. It's just like so many of their shows are for free. So go check that out if you're bored. But even sometimes it's like, even though there's a lot to do, it's still boring. I know. Cherie says, I'm missing my family. I completely understand. Nilda, 37 days for me. I understand. Struggling, scared at work. Yeah. Carrie, I'm so sorry. I know for so many people that are, you know, having to actually keep going to work, especially in healthcare, you guys are heroes. I know it's really, really tough, but it's, it's been tough. And it's, I think it's also the not knowing of when we're going to get out of this. <laughs> um, Laura, I'm an introvert and will admit that I'm enjoying not having the pressure to go out and be normal. Yeah. And I think everybody's kind of having their own experiences during this time. It's like some people, it's like me, I'm, I'm an extrovert. It's very difficult for me not to go out. So this is why this helps. It's too bad. I can't see your faces, but at least I can see that you guys are here with me. But yeah, for introverts, it's, you know, it's probably a lot of people I know are getting more done. Um, and, you know, feeling good about it. Wow, Veronica, 42 days in Italy. That's really, really tough. Christabel, yeah, I have things to do, but not being able to go somewhere, even though I enjoy staying home. It's like just knowing that you can't take, you know, like taking that possibility away from you. So I totally understand that. Today's Linda's 76th birthday. Oh my gosh, happy birthday, Linda. Um, <laughs> Yes, big love to our frontliners. You guys are doing an amazing job. Hey, Erica. I suffered with agoraphobia as a teen and I'm worried about it coming back. Gemma, that's scary. Yeah, I totally understand. It's like now you can't. Do you at least have a place you can go? Oh, George. George loves me in a hat <laughs> for some reason. Oh, my goodness. You're crazy. Um, miss my seven grandkids. Yes, Diane, I totally understand. 
<clears throat> none if it will happen yeah i think that that's part of the frustration too is like some people have been planning things like planning vacations or planning just lots of different things that now we're not sure like i was planning a vacation in june with my cousin and now it's like pretty much we're going to have to cancel it so that's unfortunate but it's really tough and missing friends and family and everything else. So I just wanted to check in with you guys, let you know that you're not alone. We're in this community together. We're, um, you know, we're hanging in there and we're there with you guys. I hope that this story has been helping somewhat. I know that the community is definitely helping me. So thank you guys so much for showing up every day. Um, it's a few minutes after, so I am going to go ahead and mention a few things that I had on my list. Oh my gosh. Yes. Summer might be a bummer <laughs> because it's, it's like we live, we specifically moved here to be near the beach, which is like, yay. So excited to live near the beach. And now the beaches are closed. Obviously. I mean, we want to be for, we want to be safe, but it still stinks. Nicole, you had to cancel your wedding. Hopefully you guys still got married and just are moving the wedding. Hopefully you didn't have to like actually wait to get married. <laughs> that would be so hard thinking of you guys. Um, Jennifer Evelyn Hayes, hot slayers and ball caps series. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, broke down because they said that old people might have to stay indoor and with distance for one to two years. No, 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 please, Karen. I hope that is not true. Hopefully there's going to be a vaccine for this and we're going to get through it. I'm holding out hope y'all. I'm definitely holding out hope. Um, I saw a congrats to LA long, but I don't know what for. Congrats to you. Um, all right. So a couple of things I wanted to mention to you guys. I meant to mention it yesterday and I just got so excited running my mouth about other things that I forgot. Um, I am in currently a YA mega bundle. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there is a thing called story bundle where um, a guy named Jason puts together these amazing bundles of books, like book bundles. And a lot of times some things will go to charity or it'll just be a way to find new authors. I have never done one before, but this one, when he approached me, I was like, okay, I've got to do this because it's all going to charity. Like 50% of it is going to charity. Plus there's a lot of us like me that are just donating any proceeds that we get also to this charity. So basically it's a collection of 28 different authors and some of us have multiple books in there. So you get a lot of books, YA books, and they're all young adult, but spread across multiple genres and it's pay what you want. So the minimum is only a dollar. That's all you have to do. The link is in the description box. So um, I, I don't have it handy here, but it's in the description. So I don't know if you can see it where you're sitting right now with the chat, but otherwise it is down below. Um, this is all you have to do is pay a dollar. They will, you can either choose to download them individually or you can download them all together or you can have them sent directly to your Kindle also if you want them to do that, if you don't know how to sideload. But it's an amazing way and you can pay $20 if you want, you can pay $1 if you want, but that's the minimum and it's just pay what you want. And like I said, majority of it is going to a charity called Mighty Writers. And this charity is one that really helps like and serves schools and lower income families. And right now they're actually, it's, it's well, child's literacy. We'll just say ch children's literacy in a lot of country or a lot of cities here in the United States. And right now they're also doing a lot of much needed food outreach for kids that don't have access to meals at home. And this is something that really touches my heart because I was a teacher for many years and y'all, some kids do not eat if they're not at school, they're there on free lunch. And when they go home, there's not food. So this is so, so important. And that's why I wanted to donate my proceeds. And a lot of us authors are doing that. So if you have a dollar to spare, I would appreciate it if you would go and purchase that mega bundle. It is linked down below. Now, my books that are in it are just the Beautiful Demons box set. So those books are free anyway, but you will get access to a lot of other books that are normally paid. It's something like over $50 worth of books. So that's my little spiel. I meant to mention it yesterday. That is going to be going on, I believe, for almost two months. I think you have 60 days to get it. So purchase the bundle. I would sincerely appreciate it. And um, share it with friends. So if you find some books that you love, 
share it on social media. That would be great because it's such a good charity. In the first day, we already raised $2,000 for this charity, which is amazing. So authors coming together to help the kids. So that's awesome. All right. Finale plans. And then we'll get started on the reading because today's is eight pages. <laughs> I told y'all they're going to get start getting a little bit longer here. Um, finale plans. I was wondering if you guys might be interested in doing something like, um, like a little party for the finale, which is going to be potentially on Friday, I'm thinking at this point. Something like, since I can't, we can't all be together, something that would maybe help us feel like we're more together, like I could send you guys a recipe for moon dust cupcakes and you can make them with your family, show up on Friday with your cupcakes, take pictures, and we can share them in the coven or on social media. Um, and, you know, maybe make your favorite coffee as if you, this is what you would order at Sir Bean. Maybe we could all get dressed up in a certain way. I don't know. Just some thoughts I was throwing around to have a little bit of a party for that final read. So if you have any ideas for it, share them in the, um, in the chat here. Email me. Send some messages on um on the coven, Christabel, if you want to make a post later that says, what are your ideas for the party? I would sincerely appreciate that if you have the time. Um, just something I was thinking about as my brain tends to go toward, Ooh, what else could we do? So then I was thinking maybe, you know, a couple of books into this, or maybe by the end of the next book, if things are a little bit different, it's like, what if I could like send things out to you guys that you could all like have, like you could buy t-shirts that we all send out. And I don't know, it's crazy. I'm like, this could be really fun. <laughs> so I'll have to find, I see a lot of people saying yes, yes, yes to moon, du moon, moon dust cupcakes. So I'm I'm thinking I need to find a recipe that I can like kind of tweak to make a good moon dust cupcake. So that should be a fun little project um, and an excuse to eat cake. So um, <laughs> no, don't celebrate alone. We'll celebrate here on YouTube. So we just won't be able to post pictures here on YouTube. So um, we can still chat though as we go. All right, you guys, I am going to go ahead and read for you episode 17. <sighs> I was... <laughs> editing this. And yeah, I'll talk about Zoom at the end. Let me make a little note for that, Kelly. Um, I was talking about this before, but like, I'm still like editing a little bit as I go. And oh my goodness. This one's long. I have a feeling they're going to get longer and longer. I thought I was going to get to a certain point at today's episode and I still didn't quite make it. So yeah, I'm thinking Friday is the finale, but you know, hang on, I will keep you updated as soon as I know. Um, but this is episode 17. I needed you to understand. Remember, we've got Bates on his knees in the center of the clearing. I assume he's refusing to cooperate, Martin said, as we joined the others in the clearing. He keeps saying he had nothing to do with those missing girls, Darius said, practically snarling as he looked at Bates. I don't think he understands just how miserable his life can get out here alone in the woods with no one looking out for him. Martin placed a calming hand on Darius's shoulder. Bates didn't look comforted, though, by Martin's appearance. In fact, he looked even more terrified despite Martin's calm demeanor. What is your relationship to Julie Peterson? Martin asked. Look, I'm done with her, I promise, Bates said. You tell me to leave town, I'm gone. Besides, I was simply trying to earn an honest buck. That moon dust isn't hurting anybody, especially not in such small quantities. Uncle Martin stared at Bates for a long moment as if trying to decide whether to believe him or not. Come on, Martin, you know me. I've never hurt anyone, Bates said. I was helping the lady sell some cupcakes. What's the crime there? The man was literally shaking. He definitely didn't appear like some criminal mastermind, but people or demons could be good actors when they wanted to be. I didn't trust him, and neither, it seemed, did Martin. It seems quite convenient that you appeared in Newcastle precisely two weeks before the first young woman disappeared, Martin said. 
He lifted his hand and spread his fingers apart. Electric sparks seemed to jump between his fingertips like lightning bolts. Bates started to cry. I didn't do anything to those girls, I swear to you, he said. I had nothing to do with it. You didn't answer my question. Martin took two slow steps towards Bates. What is your relationship to Miss Peterson? How did you first meet her? And what was your arrangement? Bates swallowed and took a few deep breaths. He looked like he was about to pass out. I met Julie at one of those holiday expos in Knoxville just before Christmas, he said. I was selling cookies and pies at a booth next to her, and I kept having people come back for seconds. By noon, I'd sold out of my entire stock. She wanted to know why, and she was pretty, you know. He shrugged at this as if we should all understand what he meant. A Christmas expo, Darius asked, pacing. You've got to be kidding me. We're supposed to believe that? Just how dumb do you think we are? You went through a portal today and left a young woman behind to be attacked by a trap demon. Where did you go, Bates? What were you and Julie Peterson doing there? Bates's eyes widened and he looked around the circle, his eyes finally landing on me. Who, her? I've never seen that girl in my life, he said. I didn't know there was any kind of trap set in there, which is why I ran like hell when I came back through to see the place half destroyed and full of ashes. I didn't want any part of it. A likely story, Darius said. Gowan stepped forward. Just tell us where the portal took you, he said. Let's start there and work our way back to the truth. The portal just leads to a factory, he said. Julie wanted me to bring an extra supply of moon dust out to her. She's got some big hopes of opening up a nationwide operation. I didn't have enough dust, though, and she got angry, sent me back for more. I tried to tell her my lab was destroyed, but she didn't believe me. My ears perked up at this. What happened last night? I asked. Who destroyed your lab? Was it Blythe Greer? How do you know her? Bates looked confused. How do you know my sister? My jaw nearly dropped to the ground. Miss Greer is your sister? I asked. I turned to Martin. Why didn't you tell me that? She's his half-sister, Martin said. She's always looking to keep him out of trouble with the council, but Bates here can't seem to stop himself from getting involved in questionable dealings. I shook my head. It suddenly felt like we were on a wild goose chase. All these things that seemed so important now looked relatively innocent, if he was telling the truth anyway. So what happened to the lab? I asked. There was some kind of fire in the woods last night, Bates said. One second, I was smoking a cigarette and trying to figure out if it was time to pack up and head to another town, and the next... I was rushing my moon sprite friends out of a blazing warehouse. I drove them to safety, and when I came back, the whole place was just gone. Everything I owned was destroyed. Except a few bags of that moon dust you were talking about, Darius said. Well, yeah, Bates said. Those were in the back of my van. And where are the moon sprites now, I asked temporarily in a hotel near the old bottle factory, he said. I don't think I can convince them to stick around much longer, though, not unless I can find them a better place to stay. Martin made brief eye contact with Asher, who nodded and got in his car. He was most likely headed to that hotel to make sure Bates's story held up. So, you moved here because Julie Peterson wanted to sell more cupcakes, Darius said. What do you know about her possible involvement in the case of five missing girls in this town? Have you heard her talk about them? Has she ever mentioned where she might be keeping them? Bates held his hands out. Can you please untie me? This is really starting to hurt, he said. No, Martin said simply. Answer the questions. 
I mean, yeah, I've heard her talking about the girls who've gone missing, but mostly it's just her yapping about how she hopes no one comes to take Olive away from her. He said she goes on and on about how she's raised that little girl by herself and how if anything happened to her, she'd just die. Typical motherly stuff, I guess. I never thought anything of it. I started pacing too. This wasn't adding up. If Julie Peterson was just greedy for a cupcake empire, then why set that trap? on her house, especially if Kai was right and that trap was set specifically for me. What would Julie Peterson possibly have against me? I just moved here. The crazy thing was that I believed Bates. He seemed to be telling the truth about why he came here, but there was still so much missing to this story. It just wasn't adding up. Miss Peterson was still the most likely suspect here, but why would Algreth care about setting up a cupcake empire. He wouldn't. Had we been totally wrong about her? Was all this stuff with Bates just a coincidence? No, I didn't believe that. There was a connection here. I could feel it. We just had to keep digging. We're getting nowhere with this guy, Darius said. Let me take him back to the house, Martin. I'll question him with a truth potion if you have all the ingredients. Then we'll have all the answers you need. I have everything you'll need, Martin said, but I will be returning to the house with you both. I have a few things I need to research before it gets too late. Gowan, you're in charge here. Keep Linny's training going for as long as she can stand it. Then come join me for a nice dinner at the house. Gowan smiled at me, his eyes full of mischief. Will do, sir, he said, but I won't go easy on her just because she's a thorn. Of course, I would expect no less from you, Martin said. I tried to act like I wasn't scared, but inside I was trembling. How much more of this could I take? I'm going to head back into town too, Kai said. I have to get ready for work. I'll come back out as soon as I get a chance, though. I was definitely sad to see him go. Could I handle this by myself? Today had already proved just how little I really knew. Gianna and Gowan stayed with me in the woods, drilling me on what they called the fundamentals for more than two hours before I finally begged for a break and sat down. My body ached, and as I sat there drinking water, I dreamed about looking through mom's spell books for some kind of bath bomb that would cure aching muscles. I closed my eyes, daydreaming about the warmth of the bath and the comfort of my bed. My eyes snapped open, though, when I heard Gowan scratching in the dirt at the center of the clearing. He was using a stick to draw a circle with a pentagram and other symbols inside it. Trying to catch a demon, I asked, almost laughing. I had never seen anyone draw this particular symbol in the dirt, but I'd seen it in some textbooks that used to be in Dad's library. Exactly, Gowan said. I stood and watched him more carefully. I didn't think anyone used these types of demon circles anymore, I said. Mom always told me they were so ancient and simple that they hardly ever worked compared to some of the more advanced techniques slayers have now. Gowan made a guttural sound and cursed under his breath. I take it you disagree, I said, laughing. This is no laughing matter, Lenny. Your mom was right about this being a more ancient technique, but it was good enough for slayers for centuries before the coven developed these so-called modern techniques, Gowan explained as he finished off the circle. In my experience, a well-placed demon circle is much more effective and reliable than many of the newer approaches. A demon circle never fails. Yeah, as long as you can trick the demon into stepping into one, Gianna said, stepping out from behind a tree. She had a small brown bunny in her hands, and I suddenly felt a bit sick to my stomach. What are you doing with the bunny? I asked. Gowan suppressed a smile as he took the rabbit from her and ran his hand across its back a couple of times. If you're clever enough, it's not that difficult to trick a demon into a circle trap like this, he said. The biggest limitation is that a slayer doesn't always have time to draw and activate it before the fight begins. Still, it's important for modern slayers to understand why this simple magic works so effectively. 
Sometimes I think the council would rather we all turn only to modern magic. But if we abandon our old ways completely, the knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals will eventually be lost. And the bunny? I asked again, chewing on my bottom lip. An exercise in your dedication to the cause, he said. Since we don't have a demon handy, I want you to practice on this cute little creature. I groaned. I did not want to do this. Lenny, you stand back about six more feet toward the trees. He turned and counted out about 15 feet back from the opposite side of the demon circle. When he turned back toward me, he leaned his head toward the bunny and whispered a few words I couldn't hear. Above the rabbit's head, a small mirror image of the demon circle appeared, marking the bunny. I'd never seen that particular spell cast before, but I understood it immediately to mean the circle would trap the bunny the same way it would trap a demon. Hopefully, all he'd ask me to do was trap it. If he asks me to kill that bunny, I was going to have a serious problem. Okay, Lenny, see if you can trick the rabbit into the circle, Gowan said, setting the rabbit down in the pine needles. Don't see it as a rabbit. See it as the demon you're trying to banish. I took a deep breath. It was hard to pretend an adorable little bunny was a killer demon, but okay. I wanted to get better, and I trusted that Gowan knew what he was doing. I tried a variety of things to convince the rabbit to cross into that circle, but if I tried to go anywhere near it, the bunny hopped away. Gowan had created some kind of barrier around the clearing so that the bunny couldn't completely hop into the woods and get away, but for about five minutes, all I'd managed to do was move it from one outer part of the clearing to another. If something isn't working, try something different, Gowan said. If you want to be an effective slayer, you have to think fast and innovate. You have to use everything around you. What else can you do here? I cleared my mind and tried to see past the frustration of feeling like a complete failure out here. What else could I use? If I was a bunny, what would trick me into following a human? The image of a carrot immediately popped into my mind, and I felt a simple rush of exhilaration. I reached down and grabbed a handful of dirt. I knew if this was a real-life situation, I wouldn't have much time to turn this into an acceptable replica of a carrot. So I allowed my mind to forget everything else but that handful of dirt and what I wanted it to become. Instantly, my hand began to numb with the power of my own intention. I cleared my mind and imagined a carrot. We hadn't gotten advanced enough to talk about color shifting and making things look realistic, but right now this was the best idea I had at my disposal. I glanced at Gianna and she nodded. That simple encouragement was all I needed. I poured my pure intentions into the handful of earth and smiled when it formed into a passable carrot shape with a slightly orange tint. Not perfect, but it was a good start. But would it be enough? I leaned down and held the carrot toward the bunny. Come on, little one, I said in a soft voice. Are you hungry? That got its attention. The bunny sniffed along the ground and took a few hops toward me. That's it, I said, backing up into the circle just a couple steps. Come on. As the bunny moved toward me, I kept backing up further into the circle, enticing it to keep moving. When his little first little bunny foot crossed into the circle, nausea rolled through me. Was this going to kill the poor little guy? I glanced at Gowan, but his face was a blank slate. I sighed and backed up again. Come on, little bunny. That's it. Get your carrot, I said, teasing him toward me. I kept my eyes trained on the bunny's feet and I gasped the second he fully crossed into the circle. The area all around us pulsed with a new kind of energy, and I could just make out the faintest outline of the circle's barrier all around us. Dang, would I be able to step out of it now, or was I trapped too? I quickly stood and took one tentative step out of the circle, then sighed in relief. Okay, I wasn't stuck at least, but what was going to happen to this little rabbit? He tried to hop toward me, but it seemed like he was stuck in molasses. He could move, but his movements were slow and labored as he crossed the circle. When he reached the barrier near me, he pushed against it, but he couldn't cross over it. The bunny 
was officially trapped and alive. I relaxed my shoulders and smiled at Gowan. There, I said, I did it. Very good, he said. Not bad for your first try, although you realize if this was a real demon, you would have lost him by now. In order to use a demon's circle, you have to be witty, clever. It's very different from the brute force magic the council trains its slayers with now, but it works. You've also expended very little energy to get to this point. I nodded. He was right. It was a lot more work fighting off the demons at the Peterson house this morning. Now, for the second part of your test, he said, it's great that you were able to get the demon into the circle, but once it's there, you need to banish or contain it in some way. This takes quite a bit more power, even willpower sometimes, especially if you stop to think about what you're doing. What do you mean? I asked, not sure I understood what he meant by willpower. Once trapped, a demon knows it has limited options, so it will often go right for your weakest spot. For a lot of slayers, our weak point is our emotions, Gowan explained. In my experience, most demons who get snared in a trap like this will immediately shift into human form and begin to beg for mercy. Even though you know there's a demon inside that person, it can be very difficult to do what needs to be done. I swallowed hard and stared at the circle. He was going to make me kill this bunny, wasn't he? So, now that we know you can use your wits to get the demon into the circle, we need to practice what you'll do once he's there. He took a mirror from his pocket and tossed it to me. It was just one of those handheld compact mirrors that a lot of women carried in their purse. I opened it. Do you know how to use that? He asked. Have you ever trapped a demon inside a mirror or an object before? I shook my head. I've seen it done a couple of times before, but I've never done it myself. Well, today's your lucky day, he said. All you have to do is point the mirror toward the demon and say the incantation. In quod relgo. And if I do that to the bunny, what happens? I said. He's not really a demon, so it won't hurt him, right? It's likely to kill it, but what's one bunny sacrificed compared to a demon going free? Or worse, you losing your life because you didn't have the courage to go through with it, Gowan asked, moving around the circle to stand next to me. It's time now, Lenny. Say the incantation. I shook my head. I couldn't do it. I mean... I was all for practicing, but what had this bunny done to anyone? You must, Gowan said, standing so close to me now, it felt like he was practically breathing down my neck. I can't do it, I said, my heart racing. Just let me practice without the bunny. No, you have to know that you can do it no matter who or what is inside that circle, Gowan said. What if there really was a demon inside that rabbit? Would you be too much of a coward to follow through because it was too cute? No, of course not, I said. I wanted to just drop the mirror and walk away, but there was also a piece of me that knew he was right. Being a slayer was not easy, and sometimes you had to make difficult decisions. Do it, he said. Your time is running out. Do it now, Lenny. With trembling hands, I pointed the mirror toward the bunny. Everything inside me protested, though. It just looked so cute and innocent. A few minutes ago, he was hopping through the woods, minding his own business. He didn't deserve this. You've got five seconds, Gowan said. Five seconds or you fail the test and you might as well go home and forget all of this. You can't do this. Maybe your friend dies. My entire body tensed and a tear rolled down my cheek. I didn't want to do this. I took a deep breath then opened my mouth and tried to force the words out. I tried to make myself say them as Gowan began counting down. Five, four, three. I shook my head. I can't, I shouted. Do it, Gianna said. Two, I looked down at the bunny. It was just staring up at me, its big brown eyes full of fear and confusion. One, I tried to imagine there was a demon hidden inside that bunny's body, but I just couldn't force myself to say the words. Instead, I closed the mirror and handed it back to Gowan. I can't do it, I said, trying to hold back tears. Maybe I'm just not cut out for this. 
Fine, I'll do it, Gowan said, opening the mirror and pointing it toward the bunny. No, don't, I said. In quod relego. I couldn't watch. I turned away as he said the words. I walked over to a nearby tree and leaned against it. I didn't want to see the dead bunny, but I also knew I had failed. We were running out of time, and I was too weak to even hurt a bunny. Lenny, turn around, Gianna said. I don't want to, I said, tears coming now. Maybe I was just too tired, too worn out after a full day of training. I couldn't force myself to turn. Gowan placed his hand on my shoulder. Turn around, Lenny. His voice was so soft and understanding, which wasn't at all what I'd been expecting. I expected him to be angry with me. I turned, meeting his eye as I wiped the tears from my face. Gowan stood there, the bunny in his hands, perfectly alive and happily chewing on an actual piece of bright orange carrot. I wasn't sure if I wanted to laugh or punch him. But you said it would kill the bunny, I said. I would have done it if I'd known it wasn't going to hurt him. Gowan passed the bunny and the carrot to me, and I stroked its soft coat and nuzzled my nose against it. It's a hard lesson to learn, but I wanted to illustrate a point, Lenora. When you're up against a demon like Algrath, he could look like anyone, Gowan said. He could look like me or even Martin. If it ever comes to that, you need to know you can do what has to be done. Do you understand me? If you want to be a slayer and truly rid the world of evil, you have to be strong. You have to be able to make tough decisions. He took the bunny from me and set him down on the ground. We all watched as the poor little guy hopped away. And sometimes, Gowan said, putting his hand on my shoulder, you may have to kill or hurt someone you thought you loved, or the image of someone you loved. With tricksters and mimic demons, you have to be stronger than you realize. You can't have any blind spots or weaknesses when you're a slayer. Not if you want to survive. I'm sorry I was so harsh, but I needed you to understand what it might be like tomorrow. I nodded, letting his words really sink in. We still didn't know who Algrath was pretending to be. He could be anyone. As I followed them to the car and headed home for dinner, I felt true fear deep down in my gut for the first time since all of this started. Who was Algrath? And when the time came, if he looked like someone I loved, would I be able to do what needed to be done? All I could do the whole way home was stare out the window and pray that whatever happened, it wouldn't come to that. Ah, the bunny is safe. <laughs> World be doomed if a demon came to me in the shape of a bunny. Yes. Ah, it is not the bunny. The bunny is not the demon. <laughs> But a harsh lesson to be learned. And I love Gowan's character and the way he's really coming out because is that a bunny in a cigarette? <laughs> George, what are you doing? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Relief or something? <laughs> I don't know where he got that. Um, but it is a harsh lesson to learn because if you really put yourself in Lenny's situation and you really think about what is going to happen. If it's someone that she knows, what if it's Martin? What if it's Kai? What if it's someone that she knows or loves? You know, you think about if you were in that position, how would you feel? And would you be able to go through with it if, you know, a demon was able to shift into that? And I think that that's a really good lesson for Lenny's character arc in terms of, you know, getting her to grow because Gowan knows he's been around for a really, really long time. He knows that, you know, this is going to be hard. This is tougher than she's ever even been exposed to before. And he also knows that as much as they're going to try to shield her from this, she might see some things, even if she doesn't have to do them herself, she might actually see some things that are really difficult. And like Mikkel just said, she needs to be prepared for anything. If they're going to let her go on this journey with them, which you 
they already know she's not going to be left home. They're not going to let her stay home or she's not going to let them leave her home. Then she has to be prepared to face whatever she faces. <laughs> okay. We need a spell that shows a person or a demon's true form. Yeah, that's true too, actually. Um, Monty Python's bunny with sharp pointed teeth. <laughs> Oh, Jennifer. Oh my God. I almost jumped into the screen to save that bunny. Hopefully kittens and puppies aren't next. That's so funny. Um, yes. Teaching her to be stronger because he knows it's not like he has like six weeks to change her. You know, he's got till tomorrow night and he was, you know, like, I'm not going to go easy on her. We're going to give her a harsh thing, you know? And it's like, yeah, harsh reality here. This is what you might be facing, except it's not going to be a bunny. It's going to be someone that you know, potentially. And um, we'll see how it plays out. Um, and I am still, like I said, still going, you know, day to day. Like I said, I have it all plotted out because I took that break last week to really like think through where the twists are going to be and how I'm going to set it up. But when I'm actually writing some, like all of this stuff that happened yesterday and today was supposed to all happen in yesterday's episode 16, but it's too many words. So it's like, okay, now we added an extra episode. So just stay with me. I, this is kind of what always happens when I'm writing and you guys are essentially seeing me write a rough draft. So yeah, this is just how it goes. Sometimes it's going to take longer to to get to that ending than I anticipated. And a lot of times when I'm writing, it is very much just instinctual. And I just go based on how it feels for the pacing. And of course, there I can already see many things that are going to need to change when I when I actually edit this. So, um, you know, when you get the final book, if you want to go back later and actually buy the ebook or whatever and read it, you're going to notice a lot of changes because the story will stay the same, but like I'm already going to change the opening scene of the book because I've seen some things now that I've gotten to the end that I want to change and foreshadowing things more in the beginning. So um, <laughs> Sandy says, I would be worried if someone as young as her could just do it cold as ice. I would be too, you know, and, you know, maybe that would make her a better slayer, but, you know, in the end, maybe it's her, you know, empathy and, I, I love writing young adult because I like writing these characters that are just coming into their own and figuring out who they are. And so I think this is a really good moment of like showing what I love about writing young adult fiction and why it's really fun um, to write because you really get to explore this character, not from the you know, not from the perspective of, oh, this is a character who's been through it all. This is a character who still doesn't quite know how she fits into the world. And that's a really interesting, you know, if you throw, if you throw a slayer in there, who's, you know, 30 years old, and she's been around the block, and she's faced a lot of demons and vampires and all this stuff on her own, she would have treated that totally differently. So that's kind of fun to hear, um, you know, kind of, how Lenny handles it differently than someone who was an adult. So um, just an interesting little writerly thing on there. Um, Burgess says, I love your, I have your books on Kindle, but now I want the paperbacks. Yes. And here's like the ones that I have. The only books that I don't have in paperback right now are the last of the Fairhope books, which I'm working on that because they're all getting new covers and the Death's Awakening series. The first two of those are not both in paperback. So that's all coming within the next few weeks. So I will definitely let you guys know. Um, and I need to add paperback links to my website because I don't have those up as well. So um, Christabel said, I got to hear the whole thing, but missed the comments. They just showed up unannounced to drop off my new fridge. Oh my gosh. I hate it when that happens. We had, I guess, so we're renting this house and we had people knocking on our door, like we're going to come in and do this termite stuff. And I'm like, could we have gotten a text message to let us know that you were coming into the house? Um, but then they didn't actually have to come in. They just had to go to the garage. So um, <laughs> George says, who wants to see the baby? Um, Gemma asked, can I get the paperbacks in the UK? So yes, the paperbacks are available on amazon.co.uk. I don't have the links up on my website, but the fastest way to find the paperbacks without the links is to search for the book and then go to the ebook 
And then um, when you go to the page for the ebook, you can select format and it'll ask you, do you want the ebook like Kindle edition or the paperback? Because sometimes there are people who will try to resell my paperbacks for like $300 or something. And it's just kind of stupid. So if you can't find a link to a paperback you were looking for, just message me. Hi. Hi, little toothy baby. She's still in her PJs again today. Say hi. So she did something really, really cool. Oh, you do? I did not know that. Christabel has the links for the U.S. paperbacks in the pinned post in the coven. You guys, if you're not in the coven, come join our Facebook group. We've been getting a lot of new members, and I would love to have you there. Um, so Evie, we have been trying to teach her how to say milk and a couple other things. And today at lunch, I was actually in a meeting, a Zoom call, and George was like, Sarah, get out here, because she wasn't eating her pears. And George was like, what do you want? And she goes like this for milk. Yeah. Yeah, you did a good job. Oh, she's like, what's that hat? What's that hat? Yeah, you're a sweet girl. She just woke up from her nap. So PJs are life. I feel like in the um, in the uh, pandemic world that we live in, we're all, we all have PJs on right now. My son's only changing out of his PJs because he has zoom calls with his teacher in the morning, but I'm in, I'm living in leggings. So these are like Halloween leggings and I'm just living in these Evie's living in her PJs all day. <laughs> yes. Baby sign language is really cool. And we tried it so hard with Andrew and he just never would do it, but she just really caught on. So now we're going to teach her more things. Yeah. Yeah, you like that hat, right? She's still just got one little tooth, but I think I feel like another one starting to come in. So I think she's getting two at once. Uh, which, shirt are, which shirt is he wearing? Is it the never forget one? That wasn't for me. That was from Frank. <laughs> Yoga pants. I know I'm wearing leggings pretty much all the time. Yes, Kitty riding a unicorn. This is a... Um, hat that I got off the Tokidoki website. Tokidoki does a lot of um, collaborations with Hello Kitty, like this one where it's the unicorn uh, mermaid. I just love their designs. They're so fun. Oops. <laughs> All you people quarantining in jeans, what are you trying to prove? I mean, George always wears jeans, but I do not. I am always in leggings, pretty much always. I'm, I'm like a huge advocate of the leggings or pants, you know, crowd. Um, LA says, Hey everyone, meteor shower tonight, draw on the excitement. Oh, I did not know that. And we're getting close to the new moon too. So awesome. I'm going to check out, do you know where the meteor shower can be seen from? I'm curious. This is life right here. This is it. Always has my hair. Always has my hair. Yes, she does. <laughs> Yeah, and George always has to have his wallet and his keys in his pocket, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Sarah's taste in shirts. Y'all, I have a love for, for fun t-shirts. It makes me happy. Um, all right, so the only other question that I had for you guys before we say goodbye, I know it's a little bit longer of an episode and, and talk today, but the only other thing I had to ask that I want you to think about that I'm going to ask you for your answers tomorrow is... Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to take of a break. If you weren't here yesterday, I am going to write a season two, book two of The Witch's Key. So I'm going to be reading it, but I'm only going to read it two or three times a week. But I'll be going live instead of every day. I'll be going live Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now we might do a reading Monday, Wednesday, and then Friday be like a Q&A or a hangout, or I might read all three days. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. But I do want to take time to not only finish up Fate Surrender and make sure I've got that good, I'm going to need to edit Witch's Key Book 1 to get it up for pre-order. And I want to get ahead on Witch's Key 2. So instead of like writing it the night before and editing it in the morning, I really want to be a week or so ahead. So that might mean that we end up taking a break between seasons one and two of up to a month. I'm not sure. I still have a lot of planning to do, but let's say it's a month. The question is, what do you want to do during that month? Do you want to still go live Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I just read something different? Um, do you want to just take a full break from it for a month and then come back? Um, 
Or do you want to just hang out, you know, once a week during the break, just doing like Q and A's or something like that. So think about what you think would be most fun for you. Um, if you're feeling fatigued with getting on every day, or if you're still enjoying it, that kind of thing. So let me know what you think. Um, and we'll kind of talk about it to um, tomorrow. Yeah, I could read more short stories. I have a few other short stories. And that's a good way to kind of pass the time but still be reading stuff. Um, 30 minutes of Evie daily, we can just have a chat with the baby. Say, yeah, I like it. I like it. She can't stop looking at the hat. <laughs> yeah, virtual writing workshop would be fun, except that there are people, a lot of people who listen that don't really want to write. So um, they just like to be readers, which is fine too. Um, whatever you decide, I'm here for it. So short stories. Thank you, planning-ish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, also for you planner lovers, just so you know, I actually have a secret box hanging out over here off camera that is the brand new Erin Condren planner for 2021. I got a sneak peek. So I will be having a video reveal go up tomorrow on my heart breathings channel. So if you love planners and you love Erin Condren, which I know some of you do. Um, yeah, I, I am excited because that is going up tomorrow to show you guys the new Erin Condren planner. It's beautiful. Um, and I have a lot of the new accessories that are going to go live. So that's awesome. Um, Maybe a little bit of all of it, short stories, hang out in Q&A. So yeah, that could work. Blah, blah, blah. I have not seen the daily and I did not get the daily. I chose something different. So, um, but I'm sure there will be lots of people on YouTube that will be doing all the different designs and stuff. I have the horizontal planner this time. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, this is a little amber teething necklace. And I I can't, I don't know if it's helping her or not. We'll see. We'll see. She's starting to get fussy though. We're about to go for a walk, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, that is it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I had you a little bit on the edge of your seat with the bunny. Um, but the bunny is safe. So Ah, another episode tomorrow, episode 18. And we'll, we're getting closer to the last three, probably three, three episodes, I think last three episodes. So you guys know that big twist is coming. All right. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah. Say bye-bye. You say bye-bye. We'll see you guys later. It's safe this time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Please click that thumbs up. If you get a chance, it really does help. It really does help. All right, you guys see you tomorrow. And Christabel posted that link in the coven group if you are that question in the coven group if you want to come over there and don't forget to grab that YA mega bundle and support an amazing charity. All right, you guys, we'll see you later. Say see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>